Hi there, Algebra 2. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. Um, 1.3 is about transforming lines. So after the activity we did in class about transformations in general, hopefully you came up with like a nice general rule. Um, so for today we're going to be able to transform linear functions and solve problems involving linear transformations. Okay, so the following rules, they're pretty, they're very, very, very general, okay? And I'm always nervous about like teaching this in this way, but I think it will help make the most sense um, in the future. But yeah, let's see how that goes. Um, okay, so the extremely general rule for transformations. Okay. If it is a vertical transformation, and this is all, sorry, this is for um, algebraically transforming them, okay? So in general, if you have a vertical transformation, it's always going to be on the outside of the function, okay? So you say your function is f of x, right? Everything that happens outside of f of x, so say for example we have a 2 out front, or a negative 2, or a plus 5, as long as I don't change anything on the inside of the parentheses, like I don't affect that, the x portion of it, is all a vertical change. And the other piece of the vertical change that's really important is that it's um, it's intuitive. So if you multiply by 2, it's going to be a stretch by 2. If you add 5, you go up 5. Um, if you subtract 5, you go down 5. Okay, It's really, really intuitive. Okay, It makes sense with how graphing has worked in the past. And the other thing that makes sense here is that f of x is just y. Right? We know that f of x is really just representing our y. And so if we do anything to y, which is the entire function, this is y, this is y. If I multiply y by 2, I'm changing things vertically. Right? If I add 2 to y, I'm changing things vertically. Um, you're, you are affecting the variable y, not x with any of these transformations. So a little bit different than the vertical, the hor which you know makes sense. Uh, the horizontal transformations always occur on the inside of the parentheses, right? Because it makes sense, right? On the inside of the parentheses, f of x, anything that's happening in here is affecting x only, not y. Okay? So um, anytime you change something on the inside of the parentheses, you're just changing x. So it's going to be a horizontal change. Um, and then the funky thing about this one is that everything is counterintuitive. So if you multiply by 2, you're actually compressing by the reciprocal of that. You're compressing by a half. If you add 2, you're actually moving left 2, not right. So um, there's a reason why, and what I would like is for someone tomorrow in class to ask me, hey, why is it counterintuitive? Because I'll explain it to you more than happily, okay? Um, so, tomorrow, we'll talk about why that is. Alright, so there you have it. Uh, those are our very general rules for algebraic transformations. Alright, so let's do a couple examples. Example 1. We're going to let g of x be the indicated transformation. So a is going to be a different transformation than b. Okay? Separate problems. But we're going to only deal with the function f of x equals 3x minus 1. Okay? And then we're going to come up with the function rule for g of x, which is the new transformed function. Okay? So a. g of x is a vertical translation down 5. Okay, so initially, right, I'm just going to write it as f of x, right, g of x 
is equal to something that we do to f of x, right? In this case, we're moving down 5, which is vertical. And so that's going to be outside the parentheses and intuitive, right? So down 5, you're going to think subtract 5. And since it's outside the parentheses, it goes outside or outside the whole function, right? So it is f of x minus 5. So then I can take my f of x, which is 3x minus 1, right? f of x equals 3x minus 1 from up here, and subtract 5 from it. So simplify that a little bit. 3x minus 1 minus 5, you end up with 3x minus 1, or sorry, 3x minus 6. And that is g of x, which is your newly transformed function. Okay? Careful with notation and labeling what's g and what's f. Alright, problem b. g of x is a vertical stretch by a factor of 4. Alright, so again, vertical means it's outside the function, right? And it also means it's intuitive. Since uh, it's a stretch, we're going to be multiplying instead of adding or subtracting. So we're going to multiply by 4. Right? So we'll say something like this. g of x has to be equal to f of x, and since it's vertical, something's got to happen outside the function. We can't change the x itself. Um, and we're, we're stretching by a factor of 4. So we multiply the function f of x by 4. So we don't need to add anything. So again, you take the original function, 3x minus 1, and replace f of x with that, 3x minus 1, and multiply by 4. Just distribute your 4, you get 12x minus 4, and that is your new g of x. Bam. There you go, that's a little cleaner for you. All right, next problem. G of x is a horizontal translation left three. Okay, so remember shifts, up, down, left, right, that's always adding and subtracting, right? We're not gonna be multiplying by anything to get that to happen. So, so um, things to take note of, it's horizontal, which means it's gotta be inside the parentheses. Uh, anything inside the parentheses, anything that's horizontal, is counterintuitive. So it's opposite of what you would normally think. And since it's a translation, we need to add or subtract. All right, so to actually do the transformation, um, we would take f of x, right? And since it's horizontal and inside the parentheses, it's not going to be just plain old x anymore. There still needs to be an x in there, otherwise it's no longer... Um, it's just going to be a constant function, so you need to have like an actual x in there, but you affect x, right? you do something to x, and since it's going left 3, we think, okay, normally left is negative, and since it's inside the parentheses, it's opposite of what we think, so instead of subtracting 3, we need to add 3 to x, so we do x plus 3, and this actually makes it um, go left 3, which is interesting. Okay, so that's our new g of x. So what does that actually look like in terms of when we actually use the function? Remember that f of x from the beginning, right up here, is 3x minus 1. Okay, so if I take that function and I change my x to x plus 3, then I end up with, I just have to replace x with x plus 3, minus 1. And then I can distribute my 3 and I get 3x plus 9 minus 1, so that ends up being 3x plus 8, and that's my new g of x. Bam! Yeah! At this point, I recommend you pause it and try them on your own, um, and then uh, go ahead and play it, and I'll, I'll show you how to do it.
So pause. All right, D. G of X is a horizontal stretch by a factor of three. Okay, keywords, horizontal, stretch, three. Okay, horizontal, remember it's inside, counterintuitive, and since it's a stretch, you multiply um, or divide. Okay, so here's the thing. Since we figured out it needs to be inside the parentheses, we gotta figure out what we need to do. Remember, it's counterintuitive, so if we're stretching, we would think we multiply by three. Well, guess what? It's horizontal, so it's the opposite of what you think it's gonna be. So instead of multiplying by three, you divide by three, or that's the same thing in effect as multiplying by a third. So uh, g of x is one third, um, is f of, f of one third x, okay? So then you take your original function, which is three x, remember f of x is three x minus one, and now we're just replacing that x with one third x, so we get g of x equals uh, three times one third x minus one. Three times a third is just one. X minus one is my g of x. And that's my answer to D. Last problem, right? G of x is a reflection of f of x over the x-axis. Yeah, this is one you really you need to think about because originally you'd think, oh, x-axis, it's got to be horizontal. But think about what you're actually doing, right? If you have a function, blah, 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 and you reflect it over the x-axis, right, you're actually flipping it this direction, right? So it's actually a vertical change not a horizontal one. And so, in fact, since it's a vertical change, it's outside the function, because um, you're affecting y, and reflections are always negatives. You're changing things by negatives, so uh, you just make f of x negative. The whole f of x. So in this case, g of x is something f of x, Okay. It's outside, so it's affecting the y, and it's going to be negative, so it's a negative f of x. Remember, f of x was 3x minus 1, so you have to make that whole thing negative. 3x minus 1 is negative, you got to distribute the negative, negative 3x plus 1. So that's your new, new g of x um, after reflection over the x-axis, algebraically. Okay. You could also do it um, graphically, and I think that visually makes a lot of sense, but you're going to have to be able to do it algebraically because you are in, guess what, algebra! Last problem. This one's a thinker. Um, I recommend pausing it, trying it. Okay. Um, Alright, so what if there's more than one transformation? Does order matter? Okay, look at the following two different ways to solve the problem. Let h of x be a vertical translation of f of x up to, followed by a reflection over the x-axis. Now, if you just try to do everything at once, right, um, you might do, okay, vertical translation um, up to, followed by a reflection over the x-axis. So you might say, okay, up to is f of x plus 2, and then I need to reflect that over the x-axis, so I'm going to make that negative, okay? In this case, you get h of x equals negative f of x, which is 2x plus 5, plus 2, okay, which is negative 2x minus 7, okay. Now, if you do it the other way, and perhaps maybe you did it like this instead, negative f of x plus 2, in this case, you get h of x is uh, negative 2x plus 5 plus 2. And that way, you get negative 2x minus 5 plus 2, which is um, minus 3. You get two different functions. So your job for tomorrow is to figure out which one's right and see if you can figure out why. And other than that, you're good to go. Have a great day.